But tell you what, we are flying off the handle, operating without a net here. I told Madison and uh, Shannon, they are part, they are the director and one of the actors in Pride and Prejudice. We're just going in, in now. You were supposed to be like about 10 minutes from now, but no time like the present, right? Nothing like improv, yeah. There, yeah, improv, there you go, thank you. Yeah. So welcome back, Madison, very good to see you. Thank you, thanks for having us. And Shannon, it has been quite some time, but you are always welcome here. Thank you. It's a very thank nice, you. okay. Happy to you. And so Pride and Prejudice, uh, Madison, of course, you are wear many, many hats for that production, uh, not the least of which the director, and Shannon is playing the role of Mary. Mary Bennett. Mary Bennett, very, yeah. very nice. Okay, so uh, if we may start with the, with the performer. Of course. Madam Director, if you may. So uh, Shannon, set us up with like context. Who is Mary, what is her personality, and as a, <clears throat> as a thespian, what kind of challenges does she present to try and like capture her essence? She is one of the most unique members of the, her whole fa Bennett family. She stands out amongst all of them um, it is a period show. I feel like, okay, for me personally, I really identify with Mary. And I don't know if that's just how much Madison really knows me so well after everything. Mm -hmm. But um, she's a musician. She loves to read. Mm -hmm. She's not so interested in finding a husband. She's, she's a pianist, right? Yes. And um, among, the, among the many instruments she that dabbles. you play. Yeah. You, yeah. You also play piano, as I, I do understand. Play you, piano. Also play, you also play violin and numerous things. Yeah. I've, I have. Yes, yeah. I have. But by the way, shout out to your family because I'm very, very good friends with your family. You, you have music in your blood. Literally, your DNA is the gift of music. So, and it's nice to see that. Thank that's you for all, saying that. Absolutely, Thank you for and it's, not, that. it's wonderful to see that someone as talented as you, your talents also extend to the stage. Okay, so Madison, when. Shannon auditioned, I, as I understand, open, open audition, so no one was saying, I want to play specifically Mary, I'm going to read for this part and everything. You just basically come in and do your best, but you saw the character of Mary captured in Shannon, right? Yeah, so the auditions, everyone has the chance to say, I'm interested in this you know, particular role, but Shannon was really open. And it was so interesting that we were doing joint auditions for Tomorrow Play Festival, and the other director was considering Shannon and eventually cast Shannon as Matapang in one of the shows, mm. as I was considering him for Mary Bennett. And those two characters could not be more different, but Shannon has such incredible range. Well, that... I've been called Matapang many, many times, but I've never played <laughs> Matapang. So yeah, it was just really exciting to see this actor come in who can do so many things um, and offers just really wonderful stage presence and magic. Um, and yeah, it just it was a perfect fit. Very nice. And, and uh, Shannon, I love how you captured that because you said it's a period piece. Jane Austen, not the easiest material to, to convey as an actor and everything. So what, what is so challenging, like not only the period, but, uh, but the language, you know, the, the dialect and also, you know, uh, the costumes even. Well, one, you know, I feel like we could say that about Shakespeare too. Good but point. I, um, well, it is, it's Kate Hamill. So it's not a, a, a purely, the, the language isn't as, um, it's still as witty and as intelligent as Jane Austen, but it is... Oh, that's right. Madison would say it's, it's a more contemporary it's an, version. Yeah, it's it's, it's mo yeah. modernized slightly, right? But, but just, still just as fun and just Thematically, as, it's, it's still... That hasn't yeah. changed at all. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. The play is still set in the early 1800s. You still get Regency vibes and the costumes and, and the way of things, but the playwright Kate Hamill, who's adapted it, uh, she... She really enjoys looking at the games of love. She brings the language into a more contemporary place, even though we're still setting it in the early 1800s. Um, and she enjoys the theatricality of it and the, the highbrow and the lowbrow humor. So there's lots, lots that she does to make Austin feel really exciting and a little different mm -hmm. than people may be used to. And I never, I never read Pride and Predators before mm -hmm. this, or I've watched the movie, mm -hmm. I never really immerse myself in the Jane Austen world. I didn't know that she had other novels from different, and um, probably learned about it in high school. Yeah. Mr. Orlin. <laughs> <laughs> Very, hey, you always got to shout out your, the, the teachers, the ones oh, yeah. that shaped you. Yeah. And certainly, hopefully, Miss Madison is doing that to not only yourself, but also to, to the Absolutely. rest of the cast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Madison, speaking of, uh, tell us uh, how large is not only the cast, but also the backstage crew and, you know, the, the people that are doing um, you know, sound and lighting and, you know, like, oh, because those, those people work equally as hard. Absolutely. Yeah. We've, we've got a cast of 13 and then I think our production team is around the same size when you count all the designers and the crew who work the show. Um, and then our stage management team. So yeah, we, all told we have a, a room full of about 30 people. Mm. Um, and yeah, they're a good group. They have been working very hard. We're in tech week. Tonight's our first dress rehearsal. 
Um, there's a lot going on, and I think it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful show. Well, you've had uh, several shows now, Madison, un under your belt, you know, in your time at UOG. Um, you've got a very, very diverse and deep amount of experience in the theater. So now having, you know, been a part of like Guam's theater community and everything, what do you see as far as the passion for acting and for storytelling and, you know, um, again, you know, classic stories as well as uh, more contemporary modern ones? I mean, my favorite thing about the Guam theater community is that the focus is on um, each other and really holding each other up. Um, it feels so positive and that is not, unfortunately, always the case in, in various pockets of theater. Um, they, they care deeply about telling the story and making art that matters to the community without being clouded by ego or competition. Um, and so I just really enjoy being in the space with those people because they, they love each other so much and I think you, they have fun together and then that fun translates on stage. Mm. So it just feels like a really pure like room to make art in. Everyone is there for the right reasons because they want to tell a story and be together. Very nice. So short, so short version, Guam's got a lot of talent. No divas though. Yeah, I mean, basically, <laughs> yeah, there's a really good group of people. You can, and they be, are. you can be very into what into your art without being a diva and without yeah. being you know, silly about it. Absolutely. They're so kind and they are so talented. I mean, I think that people are going to be really swept away by okay. some of the performances. Well, Shannon, if I may, I use that word deliberately silly, right? Because not not silly in the like the dramatic sense, and but you mentioned comedy, right? And for someone who uh, you know, you're used to doing performance art as a musician, you know, someone who can um, who can play a character. Comedy is very often said it's really, really hard to pull off, even if you have like a classical training. So how, how challenging is that? Or is it just like, is it no problem? Because I said that Matapang line and everything. If, if I was using that right now, I would have died on stage. I've got the perfect answer. And huh. I learned this from her. That- um, Madison's a very funny person. Oh yeah, of course. Oh yeah, she's so, yeah. But um, even for me, like as an actor, I sometimes I wor would worry about wanting to be funny mm -hmm. and make sure that I come off as funny. But as my job as an actor is, to the script is already funny if you if you know how it's written and everything mm -hmm. and if i just deliver what my job as an actor is to deliver hopefully how i'm supposed to deliver it hopefully people will laugh there you go you are and but I'm a vessel huh? mm -hmm. and a very a very very competent one i, I must say uh, okay now, now what do you feel being a, a member of this 13 person cast what are you taking away from your fellow performers as far as you know what they bring to the table and then what do you also offer them and do you give any like you know mentorship to maybe like younger actors or people that are just getting into the craft I, oh I, oh yeah there's there's a lot of potential amongst my friends there's i well um Sorry, what was the first part of your question? Yeah, before, like, before what, you what are you the... taking away from, from mm -hmm. what, what, are, what lessons are they teaching so you as an actor? I have been a part of uh, plays before, but this is the first one where I really feel like it's a real ensemble piece mm -hmm. because not everybody has like really long monologues or anything like that. It's a long conversation and it's, it's quick. And that's where I feel like, oh, I, I do need to step it up because I mean, there's no small parts and yeah, that is, this is, it's really a, a real ensemble piece and everybody's working at the same, everybody, it's, you know, it's a conversation. That's very cool. Madison, I didn't realize that, that, that maybe, would you say like the tempo was very, very, uh, very, very brisk and maybe almost this would lead to like, again, you know, taking a more recent example, like some of like the Aaron Sorkin stuff? Yes. Um, okay. So I would say like this falls almost into the world of screwball comedy. Like it, it does oh, nice. move <laughs> like a pace. So it's there's romance. Absolutely. But it is. Yeah, it is meant to be approached with the level of energy and irreverence. It's, it's got a lot of, of wit and quickness to it. Uh, OK, so when you're in the audience and we highly suggest uh, that you do make plans to be part of that, feel free to laugh as loud as you want, because the, the timing, the delivery and everything like that, it's all about evoking a very specific reaction, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing about Pride and Prejudice and about most of Jane Austen's novels is that, and certainly of Kate Hamill's adaptations, mm. is that the, the, the act of falling in love is like one of the most ridiculous things mm. that we do. There's like a lot of silliness and there's a lot to laugh at. No one ever gets it right. <laughs> yeah, and, and so like there, is, there are moments of this that I think feel um, really human and deep and touching, but, but it's, it's so, it's like a, being in a bouncy castle like this play is like we move <laughs> to moments of like shame deep shame and then bounce immediately out of it into some like hilarious release from that shame mm. and it just like it it moves through that sort of romantic comedy world 
um, with like a heavy dose of comedy and a heavy dose of human spirit. It's, Perfectly. Yeah. Shakespeare himself couldn't have said that any better. Did I tell you she was not hysterical, boys and girls? Like a bouncy castle. Yeah, that's, that's what perfect. it feels like. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I think that's a wonderful experience to have. So, um, Shannon, can you let people know that now we've set up everything, um, where can people get tickets and when is opening night? Opening night is this Thursday. Doors open at 6.30. You can get tickets online or at the door. What time is the booth open? So actually, yeah, we can't get tickets online. Oh, I'm tickets, sorry. No, it's okay. Tickets are only at the door, cash only. Um, but yeah, so we doors open at 6.30. You can call. Um, there's a number on a poster and on the screen, I think, where you can call to reserve in advance, um, but cash only at the door to pay for them. There we go. And if yeah. you are a Triton, of course, you get in for free because that's one of the benefits of going to college. So absolutely. yeah, and th this is absolutely, I would say, you know, if you're a student of, you know, if your major's in one of the humanities, even if you're more like a more rigid discipline, like a business major an engineering school and everything, there's still a lot you're going to be able to take away from this and really think about and really apply in your own life. Yeah, it's a great night, honestly. Like you'll just have a really fun time. You'll probably um, feel your feelings and laugh really hard. If you have someone you want to ask out on a date, this is a great uh, opportunity. They, yeah. they, they, this is great for college, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Shannon, uh, we'd like the, the final word uh, to be yours. What are you looking forward to heading into, you know, when you finally Lights, lights go down, curtain goes up, the stage is yours. What are you looking forward to? I am looking forward to um, taking everybody, uh, all of us taking everybody on to a completely different world, especially if you saw the Tremor Play Festival. That was really home and here. And now hopefully let's go have some fun and go to a completely different world and have fun also. Very nice. And I'm sure, Madison, you would you would agree wholeheartedly that is the point of any entertainment, specifically for the stage, is that they're taking you on a journey and like really giving you like this amazing experience. Absolutely, yeah. We're all going to travel together and have some fun, find out some things about ourselves, and laugh really hard. Your your own resume of the number of productions that you have been a part of is is so impressive. So thank you for introducing this to you know like a. Uh, you know, old farts like me, but also to a new generation of people that are that are really discovering, you know, uh, like what what true entertainment is. Thank you. All like right. me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So Madison Scott and Shannon St. Nicholas. Thanks, guys. All right, and we will be back with more hotspot. We we might even hang out with Shannon and um and Madison some more. We'll see right after this. <laughs>